So let's start with a very simple concept that will act as the basis for the rest of the lessons in this module and might possibly provide you with one of those pivotal light bulb moments. All we're going to do is look at applying three separate fingerings or fretboard shapes to any scale that we learn. I'm going to be covering the major scale as the main example for all of these lessons, mainly because it's the most common scale in use, but also because it's easier to learn these concepts by focusing only on one scale at a time. So let's start with our basic C major scale. I'm going to play it here at the 8th fret of the E string to give us a little room for moving up and down the neck. So the common fingering that we've already covered is this one starting on the second finger. Okay, so this is the middle finger. So we start 8th fret of the E string and then just work Work up and down. Okay, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Add its 8th fret, 10th fret E string, 7th, 8th and 10th frets on the A string, and then 7th and 9th fret and 10th fret on the D string. And for the fingering, I'm starting on that middle finger, the second finger, and it's second finger, fourth finger, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, and fourth finger. Now I'm mentioning the fingering there because it's going to be key to actually learning some of these other positions. Now, that's a very common and easy way of learning a major scale, but remember, it's just a set of notes. We can distribute them on the fretboard in any way we want. So still using that eighth fret there on the E string as our C root note, let's try starting the scale with the first finger, okay? And we're gonna distribute those notes in this next position. So start with the first finger there for the C, and then let's work up. So we've got the D, so that'll be the 10th fret of the E string, and then we've got the E there at the 12th fret of the E string. Okay, so first finger, second finger, and fourth finger. Then we move up onto the A string, and we have F, G, and A. So again, first finger, second finger, fourth finger. 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret. Then we move up onto the D string, and we have 9th fret and the 10th fret there for the B and the C. And I'm playing those with the first finger and second finger. So there we have a new pattern for that C major. Okay, so that's starting on the first finger. So we could call that a first finger pattern. So that gives us two patterns for that same scale, starting on the same fret. We've got the second finger pattern, and then the first finger pattern. Same notes, just starting on a different finger, just giving us a little bit more real estate in there. So when I mentioned this real estate that we're covering there, with the second finger pattern, we were only really working in this area from the seventh fret to the tenth fret, whereas now, with the, both of those patterns combined, we're covering all of the notes in C major from the seventh fret now up to the twelfth fret. So we've expanded it a little, but it, we're only doing this in small steps. So. Now we could try starting on the fourth finger. So we could try moving down the neck. So still working from this eighth fret there of the E string. So let's start on the fourth finger there. So we've got the C, then let's work up through the notes. Well, the next D that we've got is gonna be there at the fifth fret of the A string, because to move to the D on the E string, we'd have to move up in position. So in this position, we've got the D there, okay? So fifth fret of the A string, then the E, there it is, 7th fret of the uh, A string, and then for the F, we've got the 8th fret of the A string. So we've come up, 4th finger for the C, then 1st finger, 3rd finger, 4th finger for the uh, D, E, and F. Then when we move to the G, we're going to take the 5th fret on the D string, A at the 7th fret of the D string, and then the B at the 9th fret of the D string. Okay, so using the finger in there, first finger, second finger, fourth finger. For those whole step, whole step patterns there, you could also play first uh, finger, third finger, and fourth finger, but I tend to find it a lot easier in terms of the spread with first finger, second finger, fourth finger. Then we can move to the C there at the fifth fret of the, uh, of the G string. So this pattern covers four strings instead of three, just to get us up there to the octave, okay? I could have come up and then moved up to the C there, but that means moving into a different position, and we'll cover that later. So that, if I did that, I'd be moving up into the second finger position. So, that's our fourth finger, C major, starting on the E string.
So that's three different patterns for that same C major scale starting on the same root note at that 8th fret. We've covered the area between the 5th fret and the 12th fret. Okay, so we've covered a lot more real estate. And like I said, that's all still starting from that 8th fret C. Now, I definitely recommend sticking with those three major scale patterns for a while until you feel comfortable with them, you know, from both a physical and visual sense. Play through the patterns in the order second finger, first finger, and then fourth finger. Now I'm playing them in that order because the second finger one is obviously the most common, so we know that one well, as is the first finger, that's kind of the next most common one. And then the fourth finger one is less common, or less, you know, popular, you know, for beginners, but is still, you know, equally as useful as any of them, okay? So like I say, second finger, first finger, fourth finger, for want of a better ordering, let's say. As an exercise for getting familiar with those patterns, you could take the whole exercise and work it through the cycle of fourths. So we tried C major there, so next we could try F major, which I would try from this, this F here on the E string, because um, if you tried it down here, obviously the fourth finger one isn't gonna work. So we've got F major, second finger, first finger, and fourth finger. Then you could try B flat major, first finger, and fourth finger. And just work through like that, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, and back to C. Now, I'd also recommend playing each pattern as a separate exercise. So you could try just taking the second finger pattern through the cycle, C, then F, and so on, then try with the first finger. So we could try with the C, F, and this time we could try the low F. B flat, E flat, you know, just trying that first finger pattern, and then try the fourth finger pattern. C, F, B flat, and so on. Once you feel familiar with these three patterns for the major scale, you can start to apply this exact same concept to all of the scales that we covered in modules one and two. So you can try the natural minor scale, the pentatonic scales, harmonic minor, melodic minor, Dorian, mixolydian, all of those scales you can apply this concept to. So as an example, let's try the natural minor scale. So let's say we're on the C there again, eighth fret of the E string. Well, we're starting on the first finger if we take that common pattern. So we've got C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. Okay, so you should know that pattern by now. So, so that's our first finger pattern. So let's have a look at a second finger pattern. So starting on the second finger, and we've got the C, D. Now for the minor third there, instead of the E flat here, we can play the E flat here at the sixth fret of the A string. Then the F and the G there. So up to that point, we had eighth fret, 10th fret, E string, then sixth fret, eighth fret, 10th fret on the A string. And then we can move up to the A flat there, sixth fret of the D string, B flat at the eighth fret, and then the C at the 10th fret, okay? Giving us. So that's a whole new pattern for that natural minor. So we've got first finger, and second finger. Now bear in mind, in terms of uh, the, the labeling of this, in terms of fingers, uh, second finger pattern, first finger pattern, fourth finger pattern, that's not exactly a strict way of looking at this. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to start on that finger, for instance, that second finger pattern, I could have started on the third finger. You know, all it is is a set of notes on the neck there. You know, you could use one finger for each for each note. It doesn't matter. It's the actual the layout of the notes that we have in that position there. So the fingering is not as important. You know, in the heat of the moment when you're playing, if you're improvising especially, you're going to be switching to different fingers all over the place. There's not going to be a strict way of playing any of these. But just for the purpose of, of demonstrating them, 
it is easy to look at them in terms of this one finger per fret kind of system. You know, first finger, second finger. But like I say, it's not, you know, etched in stone. Finally, for the fourth finger natural minor scale, again, we start at the eighth fret there for the C uh, on the E string, and then we move on to the A string and have D, E flat, and F. So that's fifth fret, sixth fret, and eighth fret. Then we move up onto the D string, G, A flat, and B flat. So fifth, sixth, eighth fret again, and then the C there, fifth fret on the G string. Okay, so that's our fourth finger natural minor scale, giving us the three patterns. First finger, second finger, and fourth finger. Again, you can try all of those patterns for the natural minor through the cycle, just as we did with the major scale. And this is why I mentioned at the outset that I'm going to demonstrate all of this stuff with the major scale, and then it's up to you to start applying it to all of the other scales. So. That's the natural minor scale. Now, once you have the major and the natural minor scales, it's pretty easy to then adapt these patterns to any of the other scales. So, for instance, a Dorian scale is, is the same as a natural minor, but with that major sixth. So, let's say we're taking a, uh, a fourth finger Dorian pattern. So, I'd come up through uh, the natural minor that we just played. But when we get up to that sixth degree there, the A natural instead of the A flat will be taking the seventh fret. So okay. So natural minor Dorian. I'm just adapting each of these patterns as I go, which is why it's worth hanging around on that natural minor scale for quite a while until you feel comfortable and familiar with it. Work it through the cycle, work the whole thing, and then work each of those patterns, fourth finger, second finger, and first finger, work those through the cycle as well. Now, as well as learning strict linear scale lines up and down, you should also focus on learning the position of each scale degree or interval in each pattern. So, for instance, if we're on a C here, eighth fret of the E string, Let's say we take a perfect fifth interval. Well, the usual fifth interval that we'll see, the most common, is going to be this G here at the 10th fret. That all too common perfect fifth pattern, okay? So there's a perfect fifth, but we can also play that G here at the fifth fret of the D string, so which gives us this alternative perfect fifth pattern. So for any interval, we have a fingering working up the neck, and then one working down the neck. So when I say up the neck, I mean up in pitch. So I'm coming this way and also down the neck. So we've got that fifth and that fifth. Same for the third, the major third. The C to E, okay? So eighth fret E string, seventh fret on the A string. We could also play C to E there, eighth fret uh, on the E string, twelfth fret on the E string. Okay, so and the same goes for every every interval. Now, when we play these three different scale patterns for any scale, we're looking at a, pretty much a recipe of those different alternative uh, intervals in there. So when we play the second finger major scale, as we work up, we've got this major second, we've got this major third, perfect fourth, then we've got this perfect fifth, major sixth, it's this particular major sixth, this particular major seventh, okay? Measuring all of those intervals from there. But when we then move to the, let's say the fourth finger, we've got the root note, but then the second, instead of playing this one, we've got this one down here, okay? Then the major third, you know, as before, perfect fourth. Then we've got that perfect fifth moving down the neck, okay? Major sixth, major seventh, as normal. And then the octave down here. You know, again, it's a, an alternative octave pattern. You know, you might be used to seeing this octave pattern here, but we've also got this one across four strings. So it's absolutely imperative that when you learn these different uh, scale patterns, you're seeing the intervals in there and identifying them. Don't just blindly play it as a linear pattern, you know, oh, here's a major scale pattern. You know, you want to know the intervallic construction. I've stressed all the way through this course that when we're learning these scales, we're not just learning a fretboard shape. You're learning the intervallic construction you know that in a Dorian scale that we've got that major sixth in there as well as the minor third and the perfect fourth, etc. So as I work up through these scales, C major there, 
C, D, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major second, S seventh, sorry. Again, first finger, root note, major second, major third on the same string, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, working up, major seventh. Okay, always be aware of what those intervals are. So this is just the start of our mapping journey, but it's a very, very important step that you really need to explore and understand before expanding. Everything that we're gonna cover from this point on rests on that foundation. Thank you.